So I've been playing Starfield now for a total of 24 hours and I thought I'd make a video explaining my experience, overall impression, and what I like and don't like about the game. To provide a brief background, I'd say I've been a long time intermediate Bethesda fan for since about Fallout 3. I started with Bethesda in Fallout 3 and fell in love with the uniqueness of it and how Bethesda has a unique storytelling ability. I've played through the main quest line of each title since games such as Skyrim and Fallout 4 and I've replayed them numerous times. So when I heard I could get early access to Bethesda's new IP Starfield for just around $30 since I already have Game Pass. I was all in. So starting off, let's get right into it. One thing I noticed immediately was how good the face models look during dialogue. The facial animations are way better than what we saw in the trailer and in Starfield Direct, which I have to admit I'm really happy about. The ones in Starfield Direct had me a little worried and look really janky. In addition to the facial animations, overall character animations seem much smoother than Fallout 4. And honestly, I'm surprised at how smooth moving around in this game feels at launch. Of course, there's been some weird cases here and there where models will glitch out, but for the new IP launching here early access, this is honestly really good so far. I really like how the characters' faces are lit up while wearing a helmet. This isn't anything game-changing, but it's something that kind of wowed me at the beginning. It just looks really cool, and I think they did a really good job. Things like jumping, running, fighting, combat all feel as smooth as it's ever been and, and feels as smooth as any other RPG title that Bethesda has released. Another thing that's really noticeable is the voice actors so far are really pretty good. I haven't ran into any dialogue so far that's kind of taken me out of the game um, because of really bad voice acting or just really like awkward voice dialogue options. Which I know this was a problem in Fallout 4 where the main protagonist was at times just kind of weird and awkward and the dialogue choices that you chose really didn't match up with what you really wanted to say and one thing I'm really happy about is they got rid of the protagonist having a voice actor entirely which honestly I think is just the best choice if you want to have a, a solid RPG experience. And as Bethesda has said, this game has more dialogue options than any of their previous titles. Um, there's definitely not a shortage of people to talk to. There, it seems like there's way more characters you can talk to that you run into, especially in the cities. Um, and like random NPC interactions are, are much more dynamic and, and give you more options now. There's definitely not a shortage of things to do, quests to complete, and overall it just feels way more immersive than a lot of the other previous titles. There's still plenty of classic Bethesda random NPC encounters, interesting and funny dialogue options. I've definitely laughed to myself a good bit just reviewing what options I can choose from. Um, I really like the new persuasion system where it's no longer a one choice option to persuade. Uh, you kind of have to play a little mini game now where you get points and as you convince and talk to the person, you build up those points uh, until you reach your goal and, and successfully persuade them. I'm not going to lie, this took a little bit of getting used to for me at the start, but um, after I got the hang of it, um, I like it a lot better. It gives persuasion um, much more depth now where it's not just a one-click uh, persuade. As for character customization, I really enjoy the system. Um, I thought it gave you plenty of options to make your character look uh, almost however you want. Um, there's definitely not a shortage of options to choose from. Um, you can definitely make some interesting characters. Um, I think for my next playthrough, I'm going to try to make Gordon Ramsay and maybe be like an angry chef and just kill everyone with, with a knife and melee build and, and maybe upgrade my, my cooking skills. And like I said, there's plenty in here for you to play around with. Um, this might just be the most detailed system they've had yet, honestly. One thing I was glad to see improved from Starfield Direct was the way the hair and facial hair looks. In the trailer, it looks very choppy, spotty, and sharp around the edges, and kind of polygonal or, or pixelated. But now I'm glad to see that this was improved and seems much more realistic now um, and smoother. Um, definitely don't have any more of those weird jaggy edges around all the characters' faces. So far, I really like the trait system. There's some definitely interesting choices to choose from, depending on whatever role-playing um, you're going for. There's some unique options, such as the one I selected. The, you start off with a set of parents. Um, you can basically visit them in the city, in one of the main cities. Um, and so far, that, that trait has done way more than I expected it would. I kind of went into it thinking that you could just go visit them and have maybe a couple unique dialogue options. 
but so far they've they've actually like shown up randomly to places you'll visit um they'll leave you notes sometimes to come visit them and give you gifts um, i won't go too much into it for spoiler reasons but they have given some pretty sweet gear so far and some pretty cool gifts you will just have to find out for yourself i will say one of the things i ran into with this trait is i was in one of the nightclubs in one of the cities in the game and i randomly ran into both of them in there and that pre presented some kind of random dialogue options and some some pretty interesting awkward ones as well which i thought was just kind of a cool touch to that trait for my first playthrough, I'm doing a bounty hunter build inspired by Han Solo. I want to be able to fight and talk my way through any situation, so I've spent time leveling up the speech skills and the handgun skills in the game, as well as some of the piloting skills. I haven't went too much into gun customization so far, but I've seen some pretty cool guns, um, and there's definitely plenty of options in there to modify your gun however you like. There's also the classic gun workbenches and different materials you can make and craft with. Uh, to modify your gun so I haven't delved too much into the starship crafting or modding my ship yet um, this is one of the more pricey parts of the game where a lot of the ship parts do cost a good amount of credits uh, so currently I'm still saving up but I think it would be cool to do like a like a Falcon build or a Star Wars themed build there's just plenty of choices for you to choose from speaking of credits there's plenty of ways for you to get them from the classic collecting scrap and selling it uh, completing quests, bartering, trading, producing resources, uh, building space stations and having them uh, r basically generate resources for you. You can even assign your crew to those stations and, and they'll do the work for you. Um, so it's nice that they give you multiple ways to, to get those credits. So with this I'll probably end up upgrading my ship's guns to take out targets easier when bounty hunting. Uh, you do run into quite a bit of dog fighting in this game when traveling. Which this is something that's cool. I was kind of worried that there wouldn't be much to do in space while flying. But so far there's space stations you can visit, things to do while flying. And, and again, you do get into quite a bit of fights. One thing that's cool is while flying, uh, you can get the option to board your enemy ship instead of destroy it. Um, this allows you to board the ship and take out the crew as well as still some of their cargo. Um, I believe that you can also take the ship for yourself and you can end up even just selling the ship for credits but i haven't I haven't tested that out but I, I feel like that's a thing speaking about the ships one thing i majorly majorly dislike about this game and wish that they could have changed is the ability to actually fly to these planets yourself currently the way they have that set up is you have to fast travel to the system that your planet is in and then after you fast travel to the system, you have to then travel to the planet's landing zone. And there's multiple landing zones. Uh, you just have to pick the which one you want to go to. One good thing about this is you can kind of skip this and travel quicker if you upgrade your ship's grav drive. The higher level your grav drive, basically the further it can go in one jump and you don't have to piggyback off of different systems between you and your end destination. But again, it's, I feel like this game would be so much better and would have brought in a lot more players if they let you actually fly to these planets yourself and land. Um, maybe they'll update that in the future, but currently it looks like that's how it is. Another major dislike about this game for me is the 30 FPS lock on consoles, which I kind of understand why they did this. I know Todd has came out and said that the reason they did the 30 FPS lock on console was so that they could pack in all of the content and details within the game. Um, but honestly, I just, I feel like it, it's 2023 at this point, about to be 2024. I feel like most tr most people are expecting a 60 FPS at least from a AAA developer studio. Of course, you can play the game on PC through the Xbox Game Pass, and if you have a card that's powerful enough or a system that's powerful enough, it will definitely run smoother for you. However, it kind of stinks buying a next generation console and, and buying a game from Bethesda and it still running at 30 FPS. I feel like if Elder Scrolls 6 comes out with 30 FPS, it's just kind of going to be it. I feel like they, they're going to have to bump the FPS at some point. Mind you, I'm, I'm a big Bethesda fan, so this doesn't really take away. It's not a huge problem for the game. Um, it still runs really smooth and, and runs fine. Um, there is some FPS dips I've experienced within the cities, uh, but other than that, it's been it's been fairly smooth. 
And again, this doesn't really take away from the whole experience. Everything still runs great for me on the Xbox Series X, uh, but it is something I wish, I wish we had that smoother frame rate. I won't go too far into the main quest line, but so far it's been really good. Um, it leaves open a lot of different possibilities. Um, you go on a lot of different quests. They have you going to, to a lot of different planets for the main quest line. It's not just locked into one planet. Um, so this really gives you an ability to discover new things and there's definitely not a shortage of things to do so far. One really cool feature that I thought was notable was the in-game photos that you can take. Um, they actually show up in the loading screens when traveling to different places or fast traveling. This is a game-changing thing, but I thought notable because I thought it was really funny to just take kind of silly photos and then while you're traveling just have it show up on your loading screen. I thought this was a, a really cool feature that they added. The combat feels really smooth. Uh, guns feel good and powerful. Um, there is plenty of quirky space uh, fashion and clothes for you to choose from for whatever kind of role playing you are doing. Um, but again, this the combat just feels way smoother um, than any of the previous Bethesda titles we've seen. So yeah, so far this game is exceeding my expectations. Um, it's exactly what I wanted it to be, minus the not being able to fly to the planets yourself. That's kind of a, a major point for me, but um, other than that, this game has been way better than, than I expected it to be at launch. And again, I just wanted this to be a kind of a quick rundown of what I've experienced so far. I um, honestly think that this is the smoothest Bethesda RPG uh, title we've seen at launch th thus far, and I can't wait to see what else we will run into. I came into the game with lower expectations, but other again, other than the flying and the FPS locked, I think this is a really solid game. I think they've left enough room to build on the game and, and to build something even better as the years go along. Um, so if you found this helpful at all, uh, leave me a like and a comment and let me know what you want to hear next. Later.